Shalom from Israel, I'm Avi Melamed. Today is November 29th. Um, we mark uh, 55 days to the war between Israel and Hamas in uh, Gaza Strip. For the last uh, 10 days there has been a pause in the fight uh, because of the uh, process of uh, releasing of hostages that were captured by Hamas on October 7th. Up until today, um, 88 hostages were released, 66 are Israelis, uh, women, kids, senior citizens, and 12 are foreigners uh, that were also captured by Hamas during the uh, October 7th attack. In return, Israel released more than 250 Palestinians detained in Israeli prisons, uh, mostly female and teenagers that have been engaged and convicted in courts for being engaged in terror activities. Uh, they have been released in return for the hostages released so far. The the process of uh, releasing the hostages on both sides serves both sides uh, in, in different ways. Let me start saying a few words about Hamas. Uh, one of the most immediate uh, interests of Hamas is to stop the Israeli military campaign uh, and Hamas needs some time to regroup itself. Uh, so any kind of like pause or delay or postponing of the Israeli military campaign serves Hamas. The other thing that Hamas is interested in is, of course, monetizing the sins of releasing Palestinians uh, from Israeli prisons. This is very significant for Hamas because one of the major political cards Hamas has been always using is the, um, the marketing to the Palestinians that Hamas will release all the Palestinians that are in prisons in Israeli uh, prisons after they have been convicted in um, conducting terror attacks. Uh, however, at this point, I must say up until now that the, um, from Hamas' perspective, though on the one hand those people were released, 250 people or more, it's still not the major victory, so to speaking, triumph uh, picture that Hamas is looking for. Hamas, in the end of the day, is trying to focus on thousands of Palestinians that are in prisons in Israel who are, uh, were convicted for massive um, uh, involvement in terror attacks responsible for the killing of hundreds and hundreds of Israelis. For Hamas, releasing those uh, Palestinians detained will be uh, the triumph picture. So that calls also um, something that Hamas is, of course, looking for. At this point, obviously, it's not on the table. Um, in the Arab world, I should mention that up until now, uh, uh, Hamas attempts to market the release of the current Palestinians that were released as a sort of like um, an achievement is being accepted in the Arab world in a very mixed feelings. On the one hand, uh, they do uh, celebrate the fact that Palestinians were released, but on the other hand, uh, in the Arab world, many are expressing criticism of Hamas, saying that the price paid for the release of 250 Palestinians, meaning the destructions of Gaza, the death toll in Gaza Strip, uh, the military uh, damage that Hamas sustained so far, that, that price does not really um, justify, quote-unquote, the, 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 the release uh, of uh, only 250 or more uh, Palestinian detainees so, so far. From the Israeli perspective, uh, obviously the Israeli government um, instructed the Israeli Defense Forces following the October 7 attack, uh, set two objectives to the Israeli Defense Forces. One, to bring back the hostages, and the other is to eliminate Hamas military uh, spine and end its rule in Gaza Strip. And so for Israel, ever since the beginning of the war, uh, my observation was that Israel will act parallel in two tracks. It will um, continue the war and the war plan as if there are no hostages, and at the same time, it will um, seek to release the hostages as soon as possible, as if there is no war. And this is roughly speaking the policy that the Israeli government has conducted so far. Uh, up until now, of course, every single person that is released is a, is a wonderful news for Israelis who are anticipating and looking forward to uh, the return of all hostages back to their families. Uh, yet, of course, the way there, it's still long. Uh, it is expected that it will probably take a couple of uh, more weeks uh, until this process will be uh, accomplished and, and done with. Obviously, um, uh, from an Israeli perspective, posing the war on the one hand, in a way kind of like stop or delay the Israeli military momentum that was achieved up until now on the ground, particularly uh, the fact that Israel was uh, 
quite uh, successfully able to uh, eliminate a large part of Hamas military infrastructure in the northern part of Gaza Strip. On the other hand, uh, from a military perspective, the pose also enable Israeli forces on the ground to uh, refresh itself, to um, um, revise its plan and, and its moves ahead. And it is expected that uh, Israeli military operation will expand and um, extend towards the southern part of Gaza Strip, where uh, Hamas is expected to have a very significant military uh, fight. Um, uh, the major areas that we are expecting to see that expansion of fight will be the areas of uh, the south part of Gaza Strip, um, which is a very significant area because the refugee camps, there are eight refugee camps located in the southern part of Gaza Strip. And a major urban areas like Khan Yunus and Rafah, those are areas known to be as a major stronghold of Hamas. It is also uh, uh, estimated that Hamas major leaders are located right there uh, and also apparently um, the hostages uh, also are in, in that area. Obviously one of the major questions that everyone is dealing with is the question, are we going to see a continuing ceasefire and actually, practically speaking, ending the war? Uh, there are different reports coming out from different sources on these days regarding that. To the best of my assessment, when I'm looking at different components on the ground, my answer would be that it is more likely that we will see at some point the resume of the Israeli wide-scale military operation in Gaza Strip. Um, we have to remember that for the time being, the, the major cards that the sides are holding in their possessions are as follows. Hamas holds the cards of the refugee, of the hostages, and particularly talking about Israeli soldiers and males uh, that Hamas captured. Now, one of the major issues in that regard is to remember that uh, on October 7th, when Hamas conducted the, the, the massacre of the Israelis who were participating in the peace festival, uh, many of those Israelis were, Israelis were young people in their, in their 20s. Uh, Hamas apparently is trying to somehow um, claim that those people are actually soldiers, which is of course not the case. Uh, just the same, from Hamas' perspective, it would, it, it would like to monetize as much as possible that card, because reminding you again, Hamas aims to release all the more than 6,000 Palestinians imprisoned in Israel. So Hamas, from its perspective, will try as much as possible to monetize that card. It is less able to monetize the card of the civilian hostages. That's the reason why we saw so far the release of the hostages, even though, as I said before, Hamas is trying as much as possible to prolong that phase of releasing the civilian hostages, because it goes back to Hamas' major interest at this point, trying to prolong the ceasefire as much as possible, hoping that by doing that, in the end of the day, it will stop the Israeli military momentum and it will result in a, a permanent, ongoing, continuing ceasefire and, practically speaking, the, the end of the military Israeli campaign. From the Israeli military perspective and the political perspective and public opinion perspective, uh, stopping the war is totally out of the question. Uh, there is a very clear consensus in Israel, wall to wall, that this um, a war must continue, it has to continue, and um, the objectives that were uh, set by the Israeli government must be fulfilled, meaning releasing all the hostages and ending Hamas rule over Gaza Strip. That is why I think, it, I think it's reasonable to expect uh, the expansion of the war uh, uh, at some point. Um, and the expansion of the military operations of Israel on the ground, uh, heading down towards the uh, southern part uh, uh, of Gaza Strip. Uh, there are different speculations right now as the whole issue of like what will happen the day after the war. I think at this point it's very uh, uh, premature to talk about it. It's quite clear that uh, talking currently about the Palestinian Authority as the one that could take over Gaza Strip is at this point totally irrelevant. The Palestinian Authority has neither the ability, nor the capacity, nor the willingness at this point to, to do something like that. Um, in any case, I would re-emphasize what I said in my previous um, briefings and updates. Um, any kind of arrangement in Gaza Strip post-war has to be done in a frame of a regional framework, meaning bringing to the picture major Arab players like Saudi Arabia, like Egypt, like United Arab Emirates, like um, Jordan, 
uh, and to create what I call the scaffolding that will be um, uh, the foundations upon which we could build and apply arrangements on the ground in Gaza Strip to create a different conditions, uh, differently of course from the situation that it was uh, prior to Hamas attack on October, uh, October 7th. Um, in my briefings and interviews, I've been often asked about whether the objective of uh, ending Hamas rule in Gaza Strip is realistic. Uh, one of the things that I hear quite often from people is saying that you can't eliminate ideology, and I do agree with that. You can't eliminate ideology. Hamas will not disappear, neither is an ideology. Remember, Hamas is coming from the hub of the Muslim Brotherhood, um, and Hamas is not going to disappear as a political movement. That is not the case. The case here is, in the end of the day, to make Hamas an irrelevant player. And the way to make Hamas an irrelevant player is, first and foremost, by taking out its military capacities and basically ending its rule in Gaza Strip. Hamas will continue to play a role as an ideological and political movement, but the, uh, the example that I give to, to emphasize my, my point is to say that Nazism still exists, but Nazi Germany does not exist. Um, so I think that in that sense I would say that the objective and more accurate expectations or definition of the objective of the war from the Israeli side, which is by the way also backed by the Biden administration, is to end Hamas rule over Gaza Strip. And the meaning of that is, practically speaking, that Hamas will not be any longer a player that can impact or influence the trajectory of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Uh, one more thing in that context, Hamas views itself as a regional player. And so by depriving Hamas from its military capacities and from its power of base um, in Gaza Strip, obviously that way makes Hamas totally irrelevant player also in not only in the domestic perspective but also in a regional uh, perspective something that many of the major Arab players in the world in the region definitely would not shed a tear to see uh, Hamas uh, uh, going down to conclude my uh, observations at this point November 29th I would say that there is a long winding road ahead uh, there are going to be many more coming days of tensions um, and, and frictions. Uh, we should expect more to come in the context of the war in Gaza. Uh, I would say that the major thing that we should look ahead is to see the continuation of the story of the hostages, to see the pace of the release of the hostages, to explore simultaneously whether there are parallel talks, significant talks, uh, regarding some sort of like um, an exit, in a way, out of this whole situation that basically somehow would be able to meet the side's need. And one more thing, of course, to talk about is to um, um, expect to see the resume of a military Israeli operation on the ground, particularly in the context of south part of Gaza Strip. Um, um, such a scenario, which is very likely to take place, is expected to result in a very significant um, uh, clashes between Hamas and Israel in the southern part of Gaza Strip. Remember, this is a massively populated area um, with all the ramifications that, that come along with that. And one more observation in that regard, I would expect that as part of the Israeli expansion of the military operation, uh, um, Israel's ability to extract more and more intelligence and information about the whereabouts of the hostages, talking about soldiers, hostages, I'm talking about bodies of Israeli soldiers kept by Hamas. Uh, that ability will likely increase the more Israel will present on the ground and particularly in the south part of Gaza Strip, where it is estimated that the hostages are um, uh, held. And so um, it may result in, at some point, a more intensifi intensification of Israeli military ground, particularly focusing on the attempt to find and to get to those hostages and to release them uh, through the use, of course, of military power. This is the situation right now in the context of the Israeli-Hamas war, November 29th, uh, day 55 of this war. Uh, I am Avi Melamed. Shalom from Israel.